suspects bailing and the car continues. Two suspects jumping out of the car and now the continuation of this pursuit on Hoover Street off of Bonnie Bray. LAPD making the right turn with this vehicle, apparently a stolen vehicle out of LAPD Southwest Division, transversing his way through, traversing his way through the downtown area and now heading back towards the 10 freeway, southbound Alvarado from Hoover Street heading back underneath the 10 freeway here past Westlake Avenue. Northbound, northbound Alvarado. Northbound Alvarado into oncoming lanes of traffic. A dark colored vehicle, apparently a stolen car, blowing right through these intersections at a high rate of speed. A number of officers on his tail doing about 60 miles per hour through surface streets here trying to set up for a spike strip if the opportunity presents itself, but this person is now deviating from that circle he was doing in the Pico Union area, now making his way onto 11th from Olympic and continuing uh, through these residential neighborhoods here. At least the driver still in the car. We saw two people jump out of the vehicle. Again, LAPD zigzagging their way through this part of town making their way back onto Olympic Boulevard, back towards downtown LA. Eastbound Olympic, eastbound Olympic. LAPD with their night sun on him, trying to keep up here with at least three or four units right on his tail, trying to keep up at 60 miles per hour as we make our way closer to downtown LA. We are just to the west of the 110 freeway, making a right turn southbound, back, back onto Blaine. Another right-hand turn here. LAPD trying to establish a perimeter as they try and flood the zone with as many units as possible here in the Rampart District. Again, this all started in the Southwest Division, uh, just south of downtown LA, was uh, making his way through the business district and into neighborhoods surrounding the 10 and the 110 freeway. Now making his way back again southbound towards the 10 freeway coming up on Pico Boulevard. Right turn on Pico, right turn on Pico, making his way now southbound off of Pico onto Valencia Street. LAPD doing a great job trying to stay on his tail. Let's go ahead and count those units behind him. We've got that primary unit, a secondary unit, and backup, two backup units as they continue this pursuit southbound on Valencia, coming back out onto Venice Boulevard, a right turn now onto Venice Boulevard. That's gonna be westbound Venice Boulevard. Off of Venice Boulevard, now onto southbound Union Avenue. A lot of erratic turns here, doing his level best to try and lose those officers. But you still see that night sun right overhead. LAPD not pulling around here. They are really, look at that. A unit possibly set up for a spike strip there. And he went the other way, making a left turn onto Bur Burlington Avenue. A left turn onto Burlington. A quick right onto Washington. And all four of those units behind him managing to keep up here. Look at that. Officers now waiting at various intersections ahead of him as he continues to circle this area near the 110 freeway and the 10 near Pico Union. We're continuing now on Hoover Street. Westbound Hoover. Or northbound, excuse me, northbound Hoover. Trying to make out the make and model of that car, but obviously uh, a dark color vehicle, maybe a Civic, a Honda Civic perhaps, with heavily tinted windows. Again, continuing these circles here in the Pico Union area, back onto Pico Boulevard, northbound Alvarado once again, 
on streets that we have now been on several times just in the last couple of minutes. Now again northbound on Alvarado Street. There are now upwards of a half a dozen LAPD units in pursuit here. Lots of cops on his tail as he continues these erratic moves over the double yellow lines and oncoming lanes of traffic to get around anybody in his way weaving through the Rampart District here. Now making another wild right turn there onto James Wood Boulevard. Slowing down another turn, a random turn off to the left there. And look at all of the units behind him making those turns with him as they try and flood this part of downtown L.A. Again, we're west of the 10 freeway, the 110 rather, north of the 10. And now on to, now on to 8th Street. Once again, the driver of this vehicle leading police on a wild police chase through downtown LA. It's been going on for the better part of the last 25 minutes as he continues to weave his way through downtown LA, uh, trying every trick in the book to try and lose those officers, but no less than a half a dozen to a dozen units right on his tail with that LAPD airship right overhead. You can see the night sun trying to shine a light there, warning drivers ahead of him of the danger coming their way as he continues at a high rate of speed, possibly onto the freeway here. Under the 110 freeway, under the 110, He'll come out the other side, that's 8th, and he's going to weave around this traffic here, not getting on the freeway. Uh, that'll put him in front, on, just past Francisco there as he makes his way now into the downtown L.A. area with all of the skyscrapers that uh, are so often used to hide in downtown for these pursuit suspects. Very tricky for the helicopters to keep up with them here. It's going to fall on those units down on the ground to keep a close distance and a close eye and prevent him from uh, getting away here. Lots of parking garages, lots of hiding spots here, plenty of apartment buildings. Uh, it's just so easy to hide out in downtown L.A. Now on to Hope Street at a high rate of speed. Downtown L.A., relatively empty this time of the night. Still, though, lots of pedestrians uh, walking their dogs and out and about for a Wednesday evening walk. And you can see he's now continuing on Hope Street here. All of those units still right behind him. Southbound Hope slowing down a little bit. Back onto Pico Boulevard. Right around LA Live as he makes his way past Figueroa. Continuing westbound past Figueroa, past the convention center. Westbound Pico at 70 miles per hour coming up on the freeway. He's going to go, I think, once again underneath the 110 freeway. There's the overpass. As he comes out the other side, a little bit of traffic here. He's going to get around that by going into the oncoming lanes of traffic once again. Another wild left-hand turn here. All of those units still right behind him as he makes his way onto Valencia Street. Since we've been over this pursuit, at least two suspects have jumped out of the vehicle. We believe that at least one of those suspects is in custody, and presumably LAPD is in the process of gaining more intel on this driver and trying to get some more information on what they are working with here, who they are dealing with. They can't go off of the vehicle license plate because it appears to be a stolen vehicle, and so they have limited knowledge about the driver, but once again, you can see he is posing a real danger to all of these other motorists as he speeds down Venice Boulevard at upwards of 50 miles per hour. 
a spike strip, a spike strip. It missed a failed spike at Venice and Bonnie Bray, continuing westbound Venice Boulevard. Thank you. A northbound turn onto Cortland Avenue. Another suspect jumping out, running for it. They're going to take him into custody in short order here, and the driver is continuing once again. So now three people have jumped out of this vehicle, and the driver continuing the pursuit. Again, this is a stolen vehicle, and we're told uh, by sources that there is also a felony want for the driver of this car. So it's more than just Grand Theft Auto. There are additional charges that this suspect is wanted for, and they are. there's a reason there are so many officers dedicated to this pursuit. We're going to see what those other wants are, but there are additional felony wants for the driver of this vehicle as they continue this pursuit of a stolen vehicle in downtown L.A., 50 miles per hour up Alvarado Street. Another wide turn there onto Olympic. And, oh, almost losing control. Fishtailing at Westlake Avenue off of Olympic Boulevard. Starting to lose control a little bit as he makes these turns way too fast. Very little braking, braking way too late. And here he comes again as he makes his way uh, up Westlake Avenue. Much narrower streets here as all of those PD units continue to close in on him. About, again, about 10 units, approximately 10 units that are on his uh, behind here, and they are just not letting up whatsoever. They really are dedicated to this pursuit. Look at that. Check out all of those units that are in pursuit here. you got to wonder what else this driver is wanted for. Making a left-hand turn there onto 12th Street and once again heading back towards downtown LA. Westbound 12th at 50 miles per hour, back towards the 110 freeway. LAPD right on his tail there with that airship right overhead, trying to keep that night sun on him. There's the overpass once again. We're covering a lot of the same real estate that we have just in the last few minutes. Another wild left turn there as he continues to push the limits of this Honda Civic. Again, right near the crypto uh, arena here as he makes his way past, the, past LA Live. Just past Chick Hearn here. Paralleling the 110 freeway. And here is Olympic Boulevard. A right turn on Olympic. And if you're watching us live on abc7.com and our abc7 streaming apps, get ready to switch over to abc7 on your TV set as we get ready for our 11 o'clock broad broadcast uh, eyewitness news at 11 o'clock starting in just a second. I have no eye coming. I got nothing. Nothing. No eye coming. You hear it? I don't hear it. I have nothing. I hear, I hear nothing. I heard that. I heard that. A uh, top of your screen, top of your screen, nights on top of your screen right there. That's right, Jory, the suspect who's been on the run for the better part of the last half hour, dumping several of his friends, passengers in the vehicle, jumping out of the vehicle. Some wild turns here through downtown L.A. as he tries at all cost to lose about a dozen officers who are so far managing to keep up with him at high rates of speed through, through surface streets. It started on the freeway in LAPD's Southwest Division, and now we are in 
LA, downtown LA, where this pursuit is continuing with some really wild and erratic moves at times, almost losing control of the vehicle. Jury, we believe this is a stolen vehicle, but there is much more to the story. In fact, sources tell us that there are additional felony wants for the driver of this car, this person believed to be armed and dangerous. We don't know what those other charges are, but they have tried several times to spike the vehicle. They have set up perimeters, uh, but so far he has really done a good job at evading those officers, but they have done an equally impressive job of keeping up with him. They have not let him go. They are applying a lot of pressure upwards of, as I mentioned, 10 to 12 officers right on his tail there, in addition to that LAPD airship who is keeping that night sun on him as he makes his way down. I think we're on 8th Street once again. We're covering a lot of the same streets over and over again between downtown LA and some of the residential neighborhoods near the Pico Union area. They, that, that's allowed them to set up for those spike strips. But again, so so far, most of those spike attempts appear to have failed as he turns onto Parkview Street here in the, in the, uh, in the downtown LA area. Yeah, you can't help but presume that this is probably an area that he's very familiar with, if not resides in. Too early to tell. Again, three suspects jumping out of the vehicle in this neighborhood, and we believe at least one or two of them have been taken into custody, and hopefully LAPD is in the process of trying to gain more intel. Look at all of these units, not only the units behind him, but at some of these intersections, there are units that have been able to set up for him and even attempt several spike strips, but so far we have not seen any success successful spikes just yet. At one point he did fishtail quite a bit as he makes some of these turns way too fast back into oncoming lanes of traffic up Alvarado Street, a street we have been on at least three or four times already as he continues to do circles just to the east of downtown LA, occasionally making his way under the 110 freeway into the taller buildings in downtown where it's much easier to hide out. But in, 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 inevitably he continues to kind of go back and forth between these residential neighborhoods and downtown, now near MacArthur Park, as you mentioned, continuing southbound on Alvarado Street, past Westlake Avenue, here in the Pico Union area, an area that he appears to be somewhat, or at least, I would say, pretty much familiar with. Might have caught that, yeah, might have caught that front right wheel. Yeah, at times upwards of 60 to 70 miles per hour on surface streets. I think we just caught a, a glimpse through that driver, that, that windshield. Uh, appears to be, if I'm not mistaken, another passenger in the front seat of that vehicle. So at least two individuals still inside that car. It's a compact car. We believe it might be a Honda Civic. And as we've already mentioned, at least three other people have jumped out of this car. But from our vantage point, it does look like the driver is not alone in there. There appears to be somebody else in that passenger seat and again we have to wonder what those other charges are because as we widen out occasionally you'll be able to see upwards of 10 to 12 officers in this pursuit this is not normal especially for the los angeles police department to to, to work a pursuit like this with this size of a pursuit package uh, especially through streets through downtown la it's just not something we are typically used to seeing here uh it's uh it, 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 there's a lot more to the story, to say the least. In any event, he's back on Olympic Boulevard, another boulevard that we have been on numerous times as he continues to circle this neighborhood. Wouldn't be surprised if there are more spike strips ahead of him as he continues now eastbound on Olympic Boulevard, Jory.
another wild turn. Another wild turn, he took that one a little fast and you might see signs of this vehicle behaving a little bit differently. Now going the wrong way again, or actually just turning into that left lane there. Uh, and he could have, he seems to be avoiding the, the freeway. He's had many opportunities to get on the freeway and he seems to be intentionally avoiding it. If anything has changed since that spike strip, I would say maybe he's traveling a little bit slower. Now going the wrong way on 12th Street, that might be a one-way street. Back underneath the Harbor Freeway there, underneath the 110 freeway, we'll see if he comes out the other side. You can see that Knights on waiting for him. There he is coming out the other side. That's gonna be the east side of the 110 freeway where there are so many spots to hide out. As you mentioned, Jory, there are lots of tall buildings, plenty of parking garages, apartment complexes, and you can tell that vehicle is definitely slowing down. You can see it a little bit wobbly. We'll see if we can get a better shot of it. Left tire smoking, you see a little bit, yeah, a little bit of smoke emanating from that left rear tire. It looks like that left rear is now completely flat. It takes time, you know, for those spike strips to take effect. It essentially injects a straw-like uh, peg into the tire that slowly releases the air. And I think that's what we're seeing here is that left tire starts to come apart there as he's now underneath the freeway, really slowing down. And we'll see, there he is coming out, coming out still, pushing the gas pedal, trying to get away from those officers, but that vehicle is, look at that, there's more flat tires. In fact, both of those tires on the right side are flat, and the vehicle obviously starting to struggle here as he struggles to maintain control of the vehicle, wobbling back and forth as he tries to control that steering wheel. It's not cooperating, and I think it's fair to say, Jory, this vehicle now on borrowed time as they are now setting up at various intersections along Pico Boulevard, getting ready for the termination of this pursuit. Yeah, another turn here, struggling to make those turns. I think it's just a matter of time before he uh, either decides to jump out of the vehicle or hopefully give himself up here. You can still see occasionally some smoke coming from those rear tires. At least three of the four tires from our vantage point are almost completely flat. And as you mentioned, he is really uh, going back and forth there. Swimming is a great way to put it as he makes his way again back northbound on Alvarado Street, really doing circles over and over and over on these same exact streets. Uh, not a lot of surprises with this guy. That's allowed them to really uh, execute those uh, spike strips and he's slowing down ever more slowly here as he continues past Pico up on 11th Street there on, on Alvarado at about 20 miles per hour. They've done a great job at trying to keep other traffic at bay, but it's a testament to how much resources have, have been dedicated uh, to this pursuit on the part of the LAPD. They have dedicated a copious number of uh, officers and resources to try and get this person off the road, believed to be armed and dangerous. The vehicle itself said to be stolen, but there are additional felony wants for the driver of that car, and they have not let up on him at all. All of those units continuing to close in on him from behind as he continues this pursuit now back on Olympic Boulevard. If you recognize these streets, trust your instincts because we have been here numerous times in the last several minutes, and if you've been following us on abc7.com for the better part of the last half hour, he is continuing to do circles around these same buildings here just to the west of downtown LA. Between MacArthur Park and downtown LA is where he feels most comfortable, now making his way back towards the 110 freeway on Olympic Boulevard.
That's right. It does, and we've seen a lot of experienced uh, pursuit drivers try that very tactic of intentionally making their way into the downtown area where there are so many hiding spots. It's become a well-known thing. Uh, if you know, you're trying to lose the cops, you know, downtown is the place to do it. I don't think that's gonna happen with this guy because you could just see the number of units on the ground, even if those helicopters had to peel off. Uh, there are just so many ground units dedicated to this pursuit. Uh, it's just uh, it, the chances of him getting away are practically nil. It may end up in a foot pursuit. They might have to set up a perimeter, but they are going to get this guy. Uh, this is not something that we are used to seeing when you see all of these officers at the various intersections and at least a dozen units right behind him. Again, as a reporter, I cannot wait to hear uh, the uh, the details behind what this person is wanted for. Some very serious charges stacking up against him here as he refuses, even at this late uh, juncture, uh, with all of those flat tires, to pull over and just give himself up. He was said to be armed and dangerous. Uh, we don't know what crimes have been committed, but obviously uh, they are stopping at nothing to keep up with him. They are not going to lose him. It's just a matter of he's on borrowed time. He knows it. And so he's just enjoying these final moments of freedom. It's turning into a joyride at this point as he continues to struggle with that steering wheel and crawl through downtown L.A. again back onto Alvarado. easily. That's right. And now you have the issue as, uh, as word gets out on social media and of course uh, across uh, everybody's TV set, you start to see some more people coming out to try and catch a glimpse. Again, this is the type of pursuit where you're not surprised to see that because he's basically established such a pattern that there's plenty of time and something they don't want to see. They don't want to see pedestrians get involved, even if they want to try and catch a glimpse or take a picture. It is so ill-advised because you just don't know how this pursuit is going to end. And there are indeed lots of pedestrians out and about. Some just happen to be walking around, obviously, in this part of town. In other parts, they are coming out just to take a look at what is going on in their neighborhood as he continues at a slow speed here, making his way through the same neighborhood over and over again, back onto Alvarez. Colorado Street doing these circles at about 20 miles per hour with all of those lights and sirens behind him getting everybody's attention. Uh, of course, there's a good purpose for that, but it's also attracting some of the wrong attention too, and they just don't want to see people come out to try and take part in this. This is just not uh, a smart idea. So they're going to try and continue to keep a close distance here, making these turns with him back onto Olympic Boulevard from Alvarado, again, doing a, a very, very tight circle around this group of buildings as he makes another uh, left-hand turn here, this time onto Lake Street, another narrow street here as he basically is uh, just exhausting whatever rubber is left on those rims. Uh, but you're going to see it fly off here in a second, I think. Uh, it looks like it. I'm not sure if it's actually come off. But uh, you can see clearly on that left side, uh, that rear driver's side t tire, that's really about to come off. Uh, I couldn't see if there's anything left on that front one. But so far, I mean, can see, here, look at that. Any little, any little move with that steering wheel, and you can see if he goes any faster, he's going to lose control of that vehicle. So he's got to keep it in a straight line if he has any hope of keeping this going. But I just think he is... Uh, uh, 
you know, he's on borrow time. It's clear that there's just not much time left, and it does look like there's a little bit of rubber left there, but he's basically riding on the rim. In fact, it might be all four tires at this point that appear flat. There it goes. Yeah, and that's gonna slow him down even more here and eventually that rim uh, will start to grind into the pavement. You'll start to see some, some sparks here uh, as he continues. I just don't think he's gonna be able to maintain control much more, especially as he tries to speed up here. A very bad idea, crossing over the double yellow lines. This is real potential for danger here as there is oncoming traffic occasionally here on Pico Boulevard. You can see the cars on the other side of the road. It takes nothing for him to accidentally spin out of control or drift over those double yellow lines into, the, into those oncoming lanes. Now we're back underneath the freeway here as he continues eastbound on Pico. Uh, you really start to hold your breath as he tries to make this up as he goes along here. You just hope, hope that there's nobody in his way as he starts to fishtail through these intersections. You almost wonder if they are contemplating uh, maybe some more unorthodox tactics here. I mean, they can continue uh, in a traditional way. As the way look at it, the more sparks flying off the front right tire there, that front rim starting to light up as it grinds into the asphalt there. But you wonder, uh, with the dangers at play here, whether there might be other options for them at their disposal. Again, they've already dedicated dozens of officers to this pursuit, including a dozen or so that are right behind him, continuing to follow him through uh, the streets of downtown LA as he continues with his erratic moves at 20 to 25 miles per hour on rims. He's basically, yeah. Yeah, more pedestrians coming out, catching a glimpse of this. You can see them, spectators, trying to see this pursuit come past their neighborhood here. Uh, but there are risk factors. And unfortunately, well, fortunately, it's uh, a late hour, so we're not dealing with, you know, daytime traffic. Uh, the only uh, more ideal situation would be if he was on the freeway. Look at that. More spike strips. He's going to drive around that spike. But uh, there's not much tire left to spike. I mean, there's pretty much... Uh, you know, it's pretty much game over at this point. He's on that. He's on his last few miles here. But uh, the only thing better or safer would be on the freeway. Right now, though, that doesn't seem to be an option for him. He has bypassed every opportunity to get on the freeway, and he is just crawling now up Alvarado Street once again, choosing the same streets over and over again, which has allowed them to set up at intersections ahead of him, uh, not only to set up spike strips, but also to close off additional traffic from getting in his way. They're really doing a public service by closing down those intersections because there is obviously an armed and dangerous person behind the wheel here. He poses a real threat to the community, even at this late hour, and now he is back on Olympic Boulevard as that uh, rim continues to light up the neighborhood.
doing or repeated circles along the same exact streets. It's telling that even as the pursuit has slowed down to 20, 25 miles per hour, coming really close to those parked cars, it's telling that they have not given the go-ahead for a pit maneuver. It seems like relatively good conditions for a pit maneuver to put the final nail in the coffin of this pursuit. However, there must be a reason why they are not opting for that pit maneuver. They're continuing to let this drag on uh, despite the fact that it has slowed down tremendously. Compliments of those spike attempts that have successfully flattened al al almost all four tires. And uh, those units are continuing to follow at a close distance. They could easily pit him if they wanted to, but for some reason, they have not, and in any event, that pursuit now coming to a grinding halt here, it looks like, along Alvarado Street, just shy of Olympic Boulevard, and this might be it. He's pushing the pedal to the metal, and the car is not cooperating. It looks like this has come to a dead stop on Alvarado Street. Officers getting out of their cruisers with their guns drawn, and they're gonna start barking orders at him uh, pretty quickly here. We'll see if there's any cooperation or any signs of cooperation. The very first step is going to be looking for those hands to come out the window. Will he shut off the car? Will he pop open that door? They're going to instruct him very carefully. You can see some movement coming from that driver's side door, but that door is still tightly shut, and uh, it looks like he is, uh, it looks like he stopped gassing it. I don't see those wheels spinning, but the car is still on. I'm sorry? Yeah, for sure. That. Yeah, they're ready to make that felony arrest, but this could happen relatively quickly, or it could turn into a drawn-out standoff if he refuses to come out, and that would mean a whole separate set of strategies taking place on the part of the LAPD. Let's just hope that the suspect uh, just gives himself up here, continuing to see movement. Uh, they're going to be looking for those hands. Here comes the driver's side door, popping open. Might be ready to uh, surrender here. You could see him maybe communicating. Uh, hands, in, hands not in the air. He's out of the beagle. There's the hands. Hands up in the air. His back facing those officers, stepping away from the vehicle slowly, and now it appears he is giving himself up. They are uh, not going to take any chances with him. They are going to continue to instruct him uh, to do a number of things, and uh, eventually he'll be proned out here in just a second. He's walking away from them for some reason, and now on his knees. Right. That's right. Here he is, proned out. All eyes now on the passenger seat as they continue this felony arrest. They will take him into custody here momentarily, uh, but they want to wait and see what that passenger is doing in the front seat. They can't go past that car until they understand that that suspect is not a threat in the passenger seat. There's the passenger door. A female passenger stepping out of the vehicle, her hands now up in the air. Again, worth reiterating that three other suspects jumped out of the back seat of this vehicle earlier in this pursuit. That female passenger now stepping backwards in the direction of those officers as she appears to be cooperating. And this pursuit fortunately appears to be coming to a peaceful resolution, not before putting lots of lives in danger tonight with the crazy driving we've seen. It's a miracle nobody's been hurt, but fortunately coming to a peaceful end now as both the driver and the passenger appear to be obeying those commands.
You got it. Copy that. Have we taken a minute yet? 